All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the SVS 2000 Pro Series. I've been waiting for this one. Uh, this one I'm, I'm really excited about. Uh, but before I get started, please subscribe and like this video. It helps the YouTube algorithm, keeps me going and things like that. It makes a difference, so I really appreciate that. But yeah, the, the 2000 series is the most popular SVS subwoofer since its launch. Uh, it's essentially the reason I got in touch with SVS in the first place. Uh, it's the reason I wanted them to do the affiliate program. It, it, it embodies everything that I was always looking for but didn't know how to find it. Uh, didn't know how to articulate what it was that I wanted. It actually took me some time after hearing all of this to be able to really explain the differences, you know, the difference in depth of presentation, not just being able to go deep, but to sound deep uh, and, and explosiveness and things like that. The 2000 or the PB2000 just really kind of embodied everything I was looking for in terms of value, in terms of low end performance and all that stuff. Clean bass, strong, powerful bass down low. It's really a truly a dramatic departure from most subs that are out there. Most basic subs are, you know, it gets deep and they start to fart and make all kinds of noises. It's just not a pretty thing. Um, whereas, you know, the SVS PB2000s were a dramatic departure from that. They don't sound like your typical ported sub. They don't have that boominess to it. It's, it's a flat response. It, it's just all the things that I was looking for, the PB2000 delivered on. And so, you know, so it's it's an important sub. And, and, and prior to this, it was my most recommended sub was the PB2000, just because of the economics of it and things like that. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be covering some changes to it, uh, both positive and negative. Um, and I'm going to make a prediction about this sub too. So, um, but one thing I can say for sure is this isn't just a warmed over 2000 series. They didn't just put a little lipstick on it and move on. This is truly different. Um, you've got more power, more powerful amp, uh, a new driver design. You also get the app with it and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, why care? It's just an update. Um, but I, I think this is going to be a monster. I really do. I, I've, in watching the videos that SVS created for this and things like that, uh, and the way they talk about it, I've kind of gotten used to, you know, picking out what they're saying about it. I think this is going to be really impressive. Um, you know, I, I did a video like this for the 3000. I did an announcement video, and there were a lot of naysayers about the 3000. Oh, it's not powerful enough. It doesn't look that impressive. You know, it, there are a lot of people that just poo pooed it. You know, like, oh, it's not going to be that impressive. It surprised even me. I mean, these are the 3000s here. I've got those, you know, these are PB 3000s. Those just blew me away. I was not expecting the performance. And the only subs that truly outperform them are the PB16 Ultras, okay? And that's saying a lot. Uh, they're really impressive. They're kind of a sleeper. They're smaller than the 4000 or the 16 Ultra. Uh, they're not small, okay? I don't want to say that. But they're definitely smaller than the other premium subs and easier to move around, things like that. You've got the app. You've got all that stuff. So the 3000 has been my favorite subwoofer up to this point. It really just, you know, as far as a premium sub goes, you got the, that explosiveness to it, uh, really clean sound. It just ticked all the boxes for me, right? Um, so I'm really interested in the 2000 series, the 2000 Pro series, because it's way too important of a sub for SVS to get wrong. They have to get this right, and it's, it's their most important subwoofer. Like I said, the 2000 series outsells every other series of subwoofer that SVS makes. So they can't go getting this one wrong. One thing you'll notice is that it's got dual ports as opposed to the single port design before, uh, which should reduce the potential for port noise. Um, you know, and I, I've talked about port noise before, but you know, basically any ported sub can be pushed to produce some port noise. It's basically when you know you're reaching that sub's limits and it's always at the deepest end, right? And it's only in the very most extreme scenes that you'll be able to hear any port noise at all, if you can hear any. Um, but with the dual port design, uh, with a 12 inch driver, it should be really difficult to actually get some detectable port noise out of it. Um, so again, not that the PB2000s uh, originally produced a ton of it, um, but there were some scenes where you could get a little out of it. It's, 
you know, you know, the edge of tomorrow uh, opening scene. That's just a torture test for subs. And even if a sub does make a little port noise in that, I don't give it a hard time because it's it's just a torture scene. If it does it in that one scene, but never any other time, what's the point? But it is a good scene to demonstrate port noise. But I don't expect a lot of port noise out of the PB2000 Pro because of the dual port design. Uh, the PB3000s, I can, you know, if I really crank it and really turn it up, I can just hear a little bit, but in my seat, no way. No way I could hear it in my seat. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and it's, it's more OCD friendly. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people that avoided the PB2000 just because of that offset port design. So this is more symmetrical, more pleasing to the eye. Uh, so that's another good part of it. Uh, also, you've got the, the sealed version, the SB2000 Pro, uh, which you can get in the black oak, uh, piano black gloss, or uh, piano, gla piano glass white, uh, it, which even comes with a white grill, which is pretty exciting. And we have a disappearing dog. Angel decided to move. But yeah, the PB2000 Pro only comes in black oak, uh, which doesn't surprise me because that's the same situation with the 3000, so uh, not a big surprise there. But fortunately, they do have the PC2000 Pro. Uh, a lot of people were upset that the uh, you know 3000 series didn't come in a cylinder design. There's a lot of people that like that because it's a you know space-saving design. And they're taller, right, but they take up less floor space. Uh, so it's nice to see that uh, didn't go away like they did with the 3000 series. One thing I'm not particularly excited about is the cloth grill. I really like the metal grill. Uh, I've got, you know, Bears the Newfoundland and he drools and sometimes he shakes and, well, you got to clean that stuff up and it's just a lot easier to do that on the metal grill. So I'll miss that, but I think they did that to keep the, the cost down a little bit. Uh, I think they wanted to keep the price closer uh, to the original PB2000. So. I understand, uh, but yeah, that, that's probably my biggest gripe to the whole thing, um, but not a big enough gripe that I would avoid it. You know, you have the, the PB12 NSD, which then turned into the PB2000, and now you've got the PB2000 Pro. So it's it's been a, an important line for SVS, but the thing is, I think the roots are more closely tied to the PB16 Ultra. Uh, you, you know, obviously, you get the app, right? But you also get, oh, falling dog. <laughs> but you also get the, the, the better amplifier. Um, you know, everything that's been driven with this new amplifier design has been phenomenal, right? So the PB16 Ultra, the PB4000, the PB3000, all of them sound great, and, and in part because of that new amp design. And so I'm looking forward to what it's gonna do for the PB2000 Pro. But the exciting part to me, truly, is that you get a much better sub. It's gonna be closer to the PB3000 in performance in terms of explosiveness and you know, a really clean and precise sound. Uh, I, I think it's gonna be closer to that, uh, but at only $100 more. So it's gonna, instead of $799 for the PB2000, it's gonna be $899 for the PB2000 Pro. But considering everything that you get with it, uh, the new amp, the better driver, the better, uh, you know, the, the, the app and all that, all of it, it should be a much better sounding sub for only $100 more. And the other thing too is that you should be going duals. You shouldn't get just one PB2000 Pro. If you want to get one PB2000 Pro, I still recommend getting dual PB1000s. Just, it duels are that important. It does make that big of a difference. I think it's gonna be a game changer for a lot of people. Uh, the, one of the biggest gripes about what I do, about the whole deep bass thing, is that it's not cheap. Uh, it's expensive to get a subwoofer to sound really good under 30 hertz. It's, it's difficult. It's too easy to get a sub, you know, basic sub, when it gets down that low, it farts, it makes noises, doesn't even put out that much output. It's difficult to not just make it sound deep like that, but to get it to perform well at depth, to where it's not sounding floppy, to where it's not sounding boomy. It has to be very well controlled. And so premium bass, so when you go into the 3000 series, the 4000 and the 16 Ultra, that's expensive. I mean, so I love the 3000s, right? Um, those are $1,400 a piece, okay? They sound phenomenal. The only subs that sound obviously better, like clearly there's no question it sounds better, are the PB16 Ultras. But we're talking, in order to do it right, a $5,000 budget, okay? That's out of reach for a lot of people. The people that can do it, 
enjoy it. I mean, it's it's phenomenal. It's a whole different experience. I mean, the way it just kicks you in the chest, even at the same volume level, it's an outstanding subwoofer. But it, again, five thousand dollars. The three thousands, much more affordable. But we're still talking in the twenty seven hundred dollar price range for duals. So being able to say, okay, you're going to get premium bass for you know sixteen hundred dollars for duals, and that's only two hundred dollars more than a single PB three thousand. That's exciting to me. I think that's going to be a game changer for a lot of people. More people are going to be able to enjoy true premium bass at that price point. Not everybody, I understand, $1,600 is still a lot of money for a lot of people, but it's just, it's more accessible to more people at this price point. So that's what I'm excited about. Um, you know, prior to this point, you know, the, the 3000s have been my favorite sub in terms of explosiveness, that clean, deep bass sound and all that. Um, but I'm predicting that if all goes right, the PB2000 Pro is going to be my new favorite sub. It started off as my favorite sub. It's been my favorite sub to recommend to most people because it's affordable and because it is truly deep bass. It's got that deep bass presentation. But if this does what I think it's going to do, um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm really looking forward to it. But yeah, I'll be getting a set soon to be able to check out and I'll do a, a more formal review on them. Uh, but I'm, I, I have pretty high expectations for these. So yeah, that's my announcement on the PB2000 Pro Series. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Definitely stay tuned. Uh, when I get them, I'm going to be talking about it. I also have a few other videos that I've already shot, uh, including, you know, spacing for dual subs, uh, you know, infrasonics, talking about why the towers have so much, why they're pointed that way, things like that. I've already got those shot, but this just came up, and so I needed to get this video out because this, this is this is probably the most exciting product reveal or announcement that I've done so far because it allows so many more people to have access to that premium uh, bass sound. So to me, that's very exciting. So anyway, stay tuned. Uh, I appreciate all the support. I appreciate the comments, the likes. Uh, if you want to order a set of these, I appreciate you following my link. It does make a difference. It allows me to do more things with the channel. Uh, so I appreciate that. But yeah, just the likes and the comments are great too. So uh, I appreciate all of your support. Uh, so yeah, definitely stay tuned and please subscribe. So the first time that I heard the 2000 Pro series, I actually didn't even realize I was I was listening to them. We were at a, an event in Virginia with one uh, one of our dealers and, and you know one of our consumer events, and I'd gone into their reference theater and they had dual PB16 Ultra subwoofer set up, and you know I mean it's an incredible experience there. So I, I walked out of the room to go help set up some other part of the event. And I hear just this absolute rumbling coming out from the other side of the building. And this is a very, very large showroom that they have. Um, so I, I go over there expecting to see the, the dual PB16 Ultras just unleashing fury in, in that room. But uh, turns out it was a single PB2000 Pro that was just really just owning this Jurassic Park scene. And uh, it really just kind of grabbed my attention to the point of like, how how does that possible where you can get that kind of output from a subwoofer of that size? So. Um, I think from a technology standpoint, there's some interesting stories that maybe people don't really understand, you know, what goes into this kind of engineering. And uh, I mean, let's just start with the driver. What can what can you tell us about what's new about it and, uh, and sort of how we're able to achieve that? Well, really, the, the 2000 Pro Series driver is an all-new driver. So we we totally re looked at the the whole architecture of the of the driver. And so it looks quite a bit different from, from the old 2000 series. Um, all new surround, basket, a lot of changes to the motor. Basically, we knew we were gonna give it a much higher current amplifier, so we needed to re-engineer the driver to handle that additional current and really get the, the, the best output from, from that driver. And you know, sort of the second part of that is, is now obviously the amplifier. And I know mm -hmm. Gary had touched a little bit on uh, this MOSFET output stage. Yep. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who hear that term and they have, you know, it just sort of, what is that? Um, what can you tell us about what MOSFETs are and sort of the benefit of having them within an amplifier? So really what we're talking about with a MOSFET output stage is the benefits of, a, of what we call a discrete amplifier. And so instead of using an integrated circuit or a chip amplifier where everything's uh, in one uh, package, we break it all out, we can have uh, higher thermal capabilities, and that's what allows a discrete amplifier to deliver huge continuous power and huge peak power to get those 
um, really high output levels from a subwoofer. So you're talking about real world performance. Mm -hmm. It's those, you know, those action movie scenes that just demand your subwoofer yep. to really hit that reference sort of yeah. peak level of power to really get the most out of a scene. Or, you know, if there's a bass drop in a certain type of song, it's a, it's a, a term that I like to refer to as like effortless power. Yeah. It's that like, it's not straining. It's like, it seems to like it almost the more you turn it up. Yeah, so when, when the soundtrack or the movie really has a, a huge, signal that requires tons of output from the subwoofer, it's the MOSFET output stage that's going to push all that current into the driver to give you those results. Yeah. And then obviously with the uh, the analog devices DSP, Gary touched on it as well, but you get all the benefits of the Bluetooth app and just Absolutely. more processing power. As an engineer and designer for these products, I have to say that I'm so proud of what we've been able to get out of this amplifier and this driver to make these systems. And I think that they are really going to surprise people with what they're capable of. Well, you uh, are replacing our most popular subwoofers of all time. So, I mean, that is a, a tall order, but uh, from what I've heard and, and the first experience I've had, I got to say I was mighty impressed. So